Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Without further ado, let's dive in. Did you know the golden ratio point on earth is Mecca? Many flowers have 3, 5, 8, 13, or 21 petals, all of which are numbers in the sequence. The leaves of cacti and the seeds of sunflowers are arranged in both left and right handed spirals. The numbers of seeds or leaves in these spirals are also generally in the Fibonacci sequence. We have two hands, both of which have five fingers, and each finger is divided into three parts. All of these numbers are also Fibonacci numbers. Moreover, the lengths of the bones in our hands also fit into Fibonacci ratios. So, what's the Fibonacci sequence anyway, and why is it seemingly everywhere? This famous sequence may just seem like a series of numbers, but the Fibonacci sequence has been discovered and rediscovered in various forms, not only in mathematics, but also all across the natural world and in our everyday lives. There's also another exciting offshoot of the Fibonacci sequence, the golden ratio. Suppose you have two quantities, A and B, wherein A is greater than B. Now, add A and B and divide that sum by A. If this ratio comes out to be equal to the ratio of A and B, then you can say that A and B have a golden ratio. A golden spiral gets wider by a factor of phi for every quarter turn it makes. You can find examples and manifestations of the golden ratio and golden spirals in countless places in your everyday life. Seashells are some of the most common examples of the golden spiral found in nature, but ocean waves, hurricanes, flower buds, snail shells, and spider webs are just a few of the other naturally occurring examples. We apply this ratio on Earth, we'll find out that the golden point of the globe is the city of Mecca. Whereas the golden point of Mecca is Holy Kaaba. So because it's the golden point of the globe, it is the strongest energetic field on Earth. <laughs> واخد بالك حتى في الاتجاه العلمي بمعنى ايه؟ ان هم لما طلعوا في الفضاء وصوروا فلقوا الارض كره معلقه ومظلمه ولذلك حتى الراجل قال ايه؟ اجدها كره مظلمه معلقه من الذي علقها؟ هو يريد ان هو ارمسترونج آه. وكان كانه يريد ان يقول بلسان الحل الذي علقها ووجدوا فيها شعاع يخرج من الأرض. من الأرض كتبوه في الشبكة العنكبوتية في الإنترنت وخلوه على مدى 21 يوم ثم أخفوه أخفوه لماذا؟ يعني الأمور تتبع يعني مقاصدها مقاصدها يعني يعني إخفاؤه دعنا نقول أنه له دلالة مثلا له دلالة كبيرة جدا م. لسبب لأن هذا الـ 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 البيت العتيق يعني هم لما جم ولقوا فيها شعاع لما لقوا هذا الشعاع ابتدوا يركزوا الصوره فوجدوا انه خارج من مكه وبالتركيز وجدوا انه خارج من الكعبه. For understanding how the golden mean provides an energetic field, you can take the example of the galaxies or plants which emits the energy from the center point to the outer edges, just like a nuclear which balances the energy system with the electrons which are rotating around it. It means they are taking the negative energies and giving the positive energies for a balancing purpose. وبالتالي عندما تطوف أنت تشحن معلش سبحان الله أيها هذه حقيقة. Like the ear, uh, you know, orbit, organ, like a lot of things follow this snail shell, you know. So we're going. Yeah. So I mean, I'm, I don't know like definitively, but I have a rough idea. So the golden ratio is a certain ratio that kind of emits a certain pattern found in nature. So for example, if you think of like a snail's shell, the circle that it goes in, that's a golden ratio because it starts like this and it kind of goes around and around and around and it, it follows a very specific ratio that allows it to have that pattern. So, uh, and I believe the center of that would be like the golden point or something like that. Yeah, it's like 1.61 1. 1 something, that's the ratio. It's like Fibonacci's number or something too, I believe. All right, so the ear follows it, uh, different orbits it's it, you guys can google this like the golden mean the golden ratio everything follows this in the universe it's one of allah's miracles yeah it's my yeah. it's bro it has to be hard to be an atheist to believe that that order and balance came from something chaotic and misguided that's well it's crazy what do you mean but by I, that because a lot of people might not get that yeah so to be an atheist you have to believe that there is this matter and there is this energy and it all clumped into one ball and exploded and then it just produced this like amazing universe with this perfect balance with mm. um, fusion being a very specific number. Mm. And uh, there's, there's a book titled the six, just six numbers. And it's talking about how there are six numbers that basically make up the universe and its constructions and all of that as constructs. For example, mm. the number for fusion, I think it was something like 0 0.07. 
and had it been off by like one tenth or one hundredth, like if it was 0.06 or 0.08, mm. like we either wouldn't have hydrogen or the the universe just will, like wouldn't exist at all. And like all these crazy things. And there are six of these numbers that are so specific. And on top of that, you have all these beautiful, like this beautiful balance of the universe, the golden ratio being one of it. And to believe that you basically have a bomb go off and it produces a city is basically the equivalent to having the Big Bang blow up and it produces this perfect balance and order and not something that's even more chaotic. Mm -hmm. And you're going against the law of entropy in physics too. If you really yeah. think about it, if you want to believe that, how do you explain everything going from disorder to order? You know, yeah. obviously yeah, well, the, on, the imbalance force or the intervention being Allah who can, you know, use the, the, the malik of everything. But we're talking about entropy here. How do you explain entropy? Because you don't even believe in God being an atheist. Yeah. Um, because this whole Big Bang and all of this and everything going from randomness to order to creation, just evolution, even the theory of natural selection, it, it completely goes against the law of entropy. Yeah, what's the law of entropy for the viewers? Entropy is is the tendency of things if left to do what they're doing, to go from order to disorder, to go from uh, organized structure to chaos. If you look outside in nature, m almost everything follows the law of entropy. Yeah, yeah, it's a very good point. And if you think about it, like if you were to ask a person, like if I were to ask you guys, if I do some, if I do random things every single day, whatever random thing comes to my mind uh, or whatever random thing I, I select out of a hat, I do for that day. I'm most likely going to end up dead or in prison. Hmm. If I told you I did random things my entire life, completely random things, and now I'm an astronaut with two PhDs and a football star and all this stuff, you're not going to believe me because it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense for me, especially if I said I, had a, I have a consistent schedule because hmm. I'm randomly doing things and I have a consistent schedule now. It's not, there's nothing random about it. So that's basically what entropy is, that the more random, chaotic, misguided things are, then the more misguided, random, chaos or, uh, chaotic they're going to get. Um, so it just doesn't make sense that you have order from chaos. Mm -hmm. Anyone studying chemistry and thermodynamics, even at an introductory level, you'll deal with entropy and enthalpy and all these things. I'm not trying to you know, go deep into it, but most things in nature, in, in, the, in biochemistry, in, in the wild, whatever you want to call it, it follows entropy. It's, it's, it's a scientific law. Now, a scientific law is not the same as a divine law by Allah, but in the scientific community, it's still well above theories and hypotheses. So it just shows you the severity and the, the rigidity of how much of a contradiction it is when you go against something like the law of entropy, claiming the Big Bang Theory and, uh, you know, all this. Yeah, that's very true. But atheists want to claim science as if it's some... Um like God defeating um, field, it's not a lot. It's the opposite, actually. It's the opposite. It points towards intelligent design, if anything. Mm -hmm. but, um, that's a topic for another day. <laughs> right. I agree, and there was there was a guy who DM'd us. I'm not gonna name any names, but he was basically like, "Oh, I, I was almost gonna fall for Islam, but look, science has disproven this." And I'm, I'm literally like. Okay, I see where you're coming from because once upon a time, I too would have thought that science is the golden measuring stick of reality, of objective truth. But I see it now. So I think, guys, let us know. Do you want an episode on science versus religion? Science and religion, maybe? Like, we could talk about the relationships between the two and really dissect things uh, you know, a little deeper with uh, Professor Scientist Arami. I'm very far from that, subhanAllah. <laughs> May Allah bless oh, you. Bless you, bro. But, uh, طيب, inshallah, I think that'd be a good episode. Uh, but with that being said, Allahumma atina fi dunya hasana wa fi al-akhirati hasana wa kina adab al-nar. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Ashhadu an la We got a patreon if you guys don't know what patreon is it's a site where we post exclusive content that never airs on youtube and we also post content early that does air on youtube if you like the content that we're putting out here you want that more in-depth content more personal more real stuff that we can't put on youtube then go ahead and head over to our patreon
it's pretty much free if you think about it. it the lowest tier is five dollars. Break that up between what thirty days? How much is that? Sixteen cents a day. That's fifteen cents a day. Guys, come on. We're not trying to gain anything really from this. It goes to the Masjid Fund. We also give to Sadaka. We give to charity. And if we truly need a little bit for our bills or just something for our means for food or something along those lines, that's where we might use it. But for the most part, like this is this is all for the sake of Allah here. So whatever you pay, Allah is going to give you back. And then so. We've been making free content and it does take a lot of work. Like people don't realize how, how much work it takes to sometimes do daily uploads, a new video every day. It does take a lot of work. So essentially you guys do help support the channel, help keep us going, help us propagating the deen of Allah. When we record Patreon videos, like Patreon videos are when the, the realists of the real in us come out. Because we're not thinking about like, oh, this can go on YouTube. I can say this word. I can't say that word. We are as clear cut, as specific, as unfiltered as we need to be, you know, as Muslims as we should be, alhamdulillah, very straight to the point. And you'll see like videos with, with me and, and Fahd and Anhil, they're just so real on Patreon. And I think that's what the Muslim Ummah needs. And if you need, you know, real brothers that are willing to have real conversations with you, hit that Patreon up. Because if you guys think that our channel is real and you're talking about YouTube, then just imagine what Patreon could do for you, inshallah. Consider becoming a member. Link in the description. Take your life to the next level, inshallah. And we'll see you on the other side. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.